Welcome to this new module on related party disclosures in DS24. So what is, what is related party, right? Uh, and, and why is this important from the perspective of financial reporting? That what is the, what is the quality of the transaction as entered into by companies? So in other words, when a company says that I have generated so much revenues or I have so many assets or I have so much of liabilities or, you know, these are my receivables and payables. So the key consideration is that whether these transactions as entered into by the companies are with done with independent third parties or all these transactions are in between parties, which in a way are related to each other, not as a customer or a supplier, but in other capacities, right? And in other capacities, so to say, do I exercise control over that other company? Do I have a significant influence over that other company? Or do I have a joint control over that other company? Or that other company is run by my spouse, right? Uh, or is that other company is run by my son or my daughter or my, my other relatives? So in a way, when you think about a related party transaction, it gives an impression that the transactions are may or may not be happening at, at arm's length, for example, right? Or there is a dependency on set of uh, uh, companies or individuals, uh, which then in a way needs to be told, right? Which in a way needs to be told. Why? Because that then improves the whole quality of reporting, whole quality of reporting. And that is why the standard on related party is extremely important. So it is, again, it's not a measurement related standard. So there is no measurement guidance here. It's only a disclosure related standard, only a disclosure related standard, which expects companies to identify all related parties based on the definition of the standard what is this related party and we will talk about it once you have identified who are my related parties then you are supposed to identify all related party transaction you have done with those related parties right and once and again when you look at related party transaction could be across the organization so whether it is in relation to fundraise, whether it's in relation to sale, whether it's in relation to purchase, whether it's in relation to transfer of fixed assets. So anything is what you're doing with your related party is a related party transaction. There's a whole lot of this uh, uh, debate on this under the Companies Act as well, right? So it's a, it's a very, very important in a way um, consideration as you look at overall financial reporting. So you have to identify then all your related parties. You have to identify then all related party transactions, then bucket them into appropriate categories and then do all related disclosures, not only for the current year, but also for the previous period. So as a reader of the financial statement, I'm able to then appreciate what's the quality of financial reporting? What's the quality of transactions you are doing as a company? Can you actually stand off your own or you need related parties in a way to continue your journey from a, from a business perspective, right? And, and that's what we are in a way focused on. So, so we will try and understand what's the meaning of related party reporting entity, right? Reporting entity, the relevance is that it, whatever you do, it, you do with reference to the reporting entity. Because for another entity, the related party may be different. So you, whatever we will do with reference to the reporting entity. Control, what's the meaning of control? Again, we go back to the uh, similar definition of control as what is defined in the NDS 110. Significant influence, key management personnel, related party relationships, and related party transactions then how to disclose related party relationships and transaction entered into with them during the course of the business operations, how to comply with the disclosure requirement with regards to related party disclosures as per NDS 24. So we're going to look at all of this in totality as we, as we progress through the standard. So if you look at, again, the relevance of this from an examination perspective, 
uh, is not that you know a whole lot of questions are coming here. Uh, it was examined once in the, the under the old syllabus. Um, the standard is largely similar when you look at the existing Indian gap versus the India standard. The at a concept level is largely similar, though the the definition of related party is a little bit more expanded. The coverage of the related party transaction is a little bit more expanded, but at a fundamental level, it stays the same. At a fundamental level, uh, it stays the same. But yeah, you the topic is important because you need to understand this and it has significant consequence in real life. Okay, When I say real life, uh, if you're a company, you're doing related party transaction, it can have significant Im impact, let's say, on your governance if you don't disclose it appropriately. So it's important for every company to identify all the related party relationships as well as do you know enough disclosures for all related party transactions from that from that perspective so what's the objective and scope of the standard objective is to ensure that uh, it, it contains necessary disclosures with reference to related party relationships related party transaction receivables and payables and if you made any commitment to such related parties it may affect the user assessment, as I said, of the operations of the entity and the risk and opportunities facing the entity, right? It, it, it gives you a perspective that this company, as I said, can stand off its own or this company is dependent upon the related party. So that's the important uh, consideration from a financial reporting perspective, from information to stakeholders perspective, from your ability to then take decision to engage with this company or not. So where is it we need to apply this standard in terms of identification of related party relationships and we will spend a whole lot of time in understanding this. Then identifying related party transaction, which is much easier, right? Once you identify the relationship transaction, you know, end of the day, what, you, what is it you will do? You will do sale or purchase, right? Uh, you will do either you will raise capital or you will give loans. So a lot of things we see, like uh, Indian governance framework, we experience that a lot of Indian companies do related party deposits. They do give deposits, they take deposit, which is, is uh, again, is not a great thing from a, from a governance perspective, but again, that is commonplace. So identifying outstanding balances between an ent entity and its related parties identifying commitments so again you go back to those objectives so that is what is covered here in terms of related party relationships related party transaction the balances the commitments as well as the circumstances in which disclosure of how items are to be made and then determining the disclosures to be made about the above item so we look at all of this in totality in relation to the scope as far as the related party standard is concerned what is excluded right uh, from the scope perspective uh, so i think the key thing what you always need to keep in mind while looking at financial reporting is something which is confidential something which can impact right uh, of what you do as a company um, that is something possibly you can just draw some leeway and, and decide then not to disclose okay but it's, it's a very, very uh, inexperienced. I can say that it, it, it's a very, very, uh, uh, you know, a critical line to say that, you know, what is confidential and what is not so confidential? What can, you know, if you were to put out that information can put you in harm's way versus what is something which should be done, uh, you know, from, from that perspective. So uh, disclosures are not required when either the disclosures are in conflict with the entity duties of confidentiality in terms of a statute, regulator, or similar competent authority, or the entity is prohibited by the statute, regulator, or similar competent authority to disclose certain information otherwise required to be disclosed as per this standard, right? So you got to be, you got to be very, very careful here. So a simple example uh, of that uh, uh, is uh, banks, right, are obliged by law to maintain confidentiality in respect of their customer's transaction. And this standard would not override the obligation to 
preserve the confidentiality of customers DA. So it all it all depends, you know, on other prevailing laws and regulation, which one needs to follow. That is where an accommodation is made in the standard. We are now going to you know focus on and understand the related party and their relationships, right? So what's the definition of a related party? A related party is a person, right? Now, this is the key to this whole standard. A related party is a person or an entity that is related to the reporting entity, okay? Either it's an individual or an entity, it is a corporate um, or, or a body corporate that is related to the reporting entity. A reporting entity in this standard is an entity that is preparing its financial statement, right? That's the entity, which is the subject matter of uh, reporting, so to say, for which the financial statements are being prepared. There's two types of related party relationships are envisaged. One relationship is between the reporting entity and a person or person. So reporting entity and individuals like you and me, okay? That's one kind of relation. So if I'm the controlling shareholder, I'm a person who owns this company, right? So that's a related party relationship or it is between two entities, reporting entity and another entity or set of entities, okay? So that's, two types of related party relationship is what we need to understand. And once you have understood the related party relationship, then you get to the related party transaction with these related parties, as far as it's concerned to this entity, the reporting entity from that, from that perspective. The standard clarifies that in considering each possible related party relationship, the attention should be directed to the substance of the relationship and not merely the legal form. So you got to look at the substance of the relationship and not merely the legal form. And we'll try and now understand each of them individually, reporting entity and person and reporting entity with another entities or set of entities, okay? So which all individuals or person are covered here? A person or a close family member is related to a reporting entity if that person, okay, a person or a close family member is related to a reporting entity if that person has control or joint control over the reporting entity. So I just said the example, right? I, let's say I've floated a company as an individual shareholder. I own majority, so that is I have control. Or I have floated this with you and both of us together in a way own this company. So both of us in a way have, uh, in a way control, has control or joint control over the reporting entity, has significant influence over the reporting entity, right? We've understood this concept of significant influence uh, under the standard where uh, I have the ability um, uh, in a way, so I have, let's say, represented on the board or I have certain uh, veto rights or, or I have the ability to influence. I may not be ability to take decisions or stop decisions, but, I, but I have a, since I have a seat in the boardroom or I own some substantial amount of stake, say 20%, which is a rebuttable presumption, in a way that, that gives me the ability to influence, right? Has significant influence over the reporting entity or is a member of the key management personnel of the reporting entity or a parent of the reporting entity. So there are, there are four things we are, we're looking here, right? Either I have control or joint control, or I have significant influence, or I'm a KMP of the reporting entity or the parent of the reporting entity. If that been the case, I am a related party with reference to that entity. Now, when you look at a close member of the family or a person are those who may be expected to influence or be influenced by that person in their dealing with the entity. So it includes, when you think about a close members of the family, it includes that person, that person, children. So who is this person? This person is this guy, okay? That person, children, spouse, or domestic partner, brother, sister, father, and mother. 
okay? It's a long list, right? Uh, children, spouses, spouse or domestic partner, brother, sister, father, and mother. Awesome. Now, children, so that's person, spouse or domestic partner, okay? Dependents of that person or that person's spouse or domestic partner. So essentially, it is your first line, okay? First line in your family, which is in a way covered. So uh, your children, so spouse or domestic partner. And so the definition of spouse is, is a little wider. Um, and then uh, brother, sister, father, and mother, okay? And then your children's, right? Of that person's spouse or domestic partner, right? And dependents of that person. So also include dependents, okay? Now, what's the key managerial personnel? KMP are those person having authority and responsibility for planning, directing, and controlling the activity of the entity directly or indirectly, including any director of that entity, right? So directors are KMPs and other individuals who are responsible. So ordinarily, when you may look at it, it is CEO, right? CFO or, uh, you know, COO, also company secretary at times. Right? So uh, that's defined, right? Under the Companies Act as well. Who, are, who all are your KMPs and such other individuals, right? Just a, it's a little open definition, but it's a principle-based definition. So a person having authority and responsibility for planning, directing, and controlling the activity of the entity directly or indirectly, including any director of that entity. That's the definition of a person which is supposed to be considered as a related party with reference to a reporting entity. Okay, now let's look at some examples. Mr. Sunil is a shareholder in Beta Limited holding 53% of equity shares class A, which is the only form of share capital, okay? Mr. Sunil is a shareholder in Beta Limited, okay? Holding 53% of equity shares class A, which is the only form of share capital. In this case, Mr. Sunil controls Beta Limited, right? Mr. Sunil controls Beta Limited, hence is a related party. Let's just look at this pictorially. Mr. Sunil owns 53% of equity share capital of Beta Limited and hence is a related party. Now, Mr. Sunil is a shareholder in Beta Limited holding 53% of equity share class A, which is the only form of share capital. Mr. Sunil controls Beta Limited and hence is a related party to Beta Limited. Since Mr. Sunil is a related party, Mrs. Sunil, is also a related party of Beta Limited, the spouse, right? Also, even though she may not own any stock, but she's a spouse of Mr. Sunil, right? So she's also a related party. Mr. Jack is in the board of directors of Beta Limited. It's a director on the board of Beta Limited. There was a KMP and hence related to Beta Limited. Right now, similarly, Mr. Jack is in the board of directors of Beta Limited. Alpha Limited is a subsidiary of Beta Limited. Okay, now being the KMP of the parent of Alpha Limited, right? Mr. Jack is related party of Alpha Limited as well. Right? I hope you're you're following this. Fairly simple. We're looking at related party relationships with reference to person or persons, right? And, and we said who all are, if I have a control, joint control or significant influence over that entity, right? So if I have control, joint control or significant influence over that entity or, or I am a KMP, I'm a key managerial personnel, then again, I am the, uh, you know, or with reference to that entity or with, re or also with reference to the subsidiary. And then we said, if 
if you are connected, then who all are connected to you? Your spouse, your children's father, mother, brother, and sister, or dependents, right? Or spouse equivalent, right? Or your spouse, children, right? And then we also talked about who is the KMP, is the individuals who are in the position to direct the operations and supervision, uh, operation planning, directing in the, uh, of the company, including key managerial personnel, including uh, the directors, right? Or sitting on the board, whether executive or otherwise from that from the perspective of the company let's look at more examples in in the context of related entities so we talked about related individuals now we will talk about related entity an entity is related to a reporting entity if any of the following condition applies the entity and reporting entity are members of the same group we will talk about right member of the same group what's the meaning of the member of the same group let's take an example abc limited has two subsidiaries x limited and y limited right x limited and y limited all of these are member of the same group since all are three are part of the same group they are related to each other any transaction between abc limited and x limited and y limited and x limited and y limited all potential combination of these three, any transaction between the three is a related party transaction, right? Because they are member of the same group. So first is the member of the same group. Now, one entity is an associate or joint venture of the other entity, right? One entity is an associate or joint venture of the other entity, right? So let's Look at an example. ABC Limited has two subsidiaries, X Limited and Y Limited. And Z Limited is an associate of X Limited, right? Here, Z and Y are related parties, right? So when you look at X, Y, and then it's the same structure we had. And then we look at the Z Limited is an associate of X Limited, right? So Z limited and Y limited are also related parties. Look at another scenario. A person identified above, related person, has significant influence over the entity or is a member of the key management personnel of the entity. Okay. Example, Mr. Sunil is a controlling shareholder in CD limited, the reporting entity. Mr. Sunil is also a non-executive director in QR limited, CD limited and QR limited are related to, if I control one entity and I'm a non-executive director, so they are also become in a way related party. The entity or any member of a group of which it is part provided key management personal services, okay, to the reporting entity or to the parent of the report. We, again, we don't see this. Commonly, we don't see this type of transaction where people are providing KMP support services, right? Uh, to the reporting entity or to the parent, but let's look at this as an example. Good Group Limited is in diversified business. It has investment in three subsidiaries, X Limited, Y Limited, and Z Limited. It has also invested in an associate, A Limited. A Limited has one subsidiary, GH Limited, which provide KMP services to Good Group Limited. Basis this, GH Limited is a related party to Good Group Limited, X Limited, Y Limited, Z Limited, and A Limited. So Good Group Limited, uh, it has X Limited, Y Limited, and Z Limited. They are all subsidiaries. And then we have a limited which is an associate and then gh limited which is a subsidiary of a limited that provides the kmp services so as a result of which you know all of them become related parties look at another scenario z limited has an investment in an associate b limited okay b limited as a group has investment in a subsidiary cd limited uh, JV, JV Limited and Associate AB Limited, Z Limited identifies B Limited and CD Limited as related parties. However, JV Limited and AB Limited are not related to Z Limited. Z Limited and B Limited, they are associate. 
And then we have CD Limited, which is a subsidiary, okay? Joint venture, associate, all of them in a way are related parties, right? Slightly complex structure, okay? So Z Limited as an associate in, 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 in invest, <coughs> investment in associate B Limited, B Limited as a group as investment in subsidiary CD Limited and, and JV, JV Limited and an associate AB Limited. Now Z Limited identifies B Limited and CD Limited, okay, as its related parties. However, JV Limited and A, AB Limited, right, this guy and this guy, okay, they are not related to Z Limited because they come through an associate. If they were to come through a subsidiary or a joint control, then they, all of them would have become a related party. But because B Limited is an associate in between, right, it is only considering the subsidiary as the related party, but not the joint venture or the associate of an associate. Exceptions to the rules, right? Certain relationships which are not identified as related party relationships are as follows. Two entities are not related parties simply because they have a director or other member of KMP in common or because a member of KMP of one entity has significant influence over the other entity. So an example, Mr. Sunil is a director in two companies, A Limited and B Limited. Apart from this, there is no other relationship or no other directorship he holds. Also, A Limited and B Limited does not have any transaction between them. They are not related parties. Mr. Sunil is a director in two companies, A Limited and B Limited. Apart from this, there is no other directorship he holds. However, B Limited purchases the entire output of A Limited at its fair value. Okay, B Limited purchases the entire output of A Limited at its fair value by virtue of having a common director are not related. However, A Limited and B Limited may be related parties as there's a possibility that B Limited has control or significant influence over A Limited due to being the only customer, but that's not the only, that's not the criteria. Again, you look at the substance of the transaction to conclude whether it's a related party or not. Okay, so careful analysis and judgment is required. Moving forward, Two venturers are not related parties simply because they share joint control over a joint venture. Example is A and B. They have a they have a JV. So A and B are not related to each other, right? Um, uh, the JV is related to both A and B, but not A and B themselves. So Star Limited is a joint venture held by Space Limited and Sky Limited with sixty percent and forty percent shareholding. Now, Space Limited and Sky Limited has joint control over the venture. Because, however, they are not related party under India's 23. Similarly, the provider of finance, the trade unions, the public utility and department and agencies of a government that does not control, jointly control or significantly influence the reporting entity are not related parties simply by virtue of their dealings with the entity. Okay. So example, company MNO has taken a term loan from bank XYZ and bank PQR for their operations. Both the banks have nominated a non-executive observer on the board of company MNO. Bank XYZ and bank PQR are not related parties of company MNO. The more exceptions to the related parties principle a customer, a supplier, a franchiser, or a distributor, or a general agent with whom the entity transacts a significant volume is not a related party. So an example, uh, Gamma Limited is in the business of production of automobile parts, supplying to Sedan Limited. Entire output of Gamma Limited is taken by Sedan Limited. Sedan Limited does not have any other interest or stake in Gamma Limited. They are not related parties. Let's take an example. Mr. John is a 100% shareholder in Sun Limited, all right? And Mr. John is also a director in Moon Limited, okay? Moon Limited is entirely held by Star Limited, 
okay now you are required whether sun limited is related to moon limited whether sun limited is related to moon limited assuming mr john is a kmp of star limited instead of moon limited would you answer in a and b above change if john has con joint control over sun limited would you answer in a and b above change if mr john has significant influence over sun limited? okay good question let's look at the question again So, Mr. John, a person is a 100% shareholder in Sun Limited. Okay. That means Mr. John and Sun Limited are related to each other. Mr. John is also a director in Moon Limited. Okay. So, I am a, I control Sun Limited and I'm a director in Moon Limited. Okay. So, as a result of which, Sun and Moon are also related. Okay, because I control, right? Now, Moon Limited is entirely held 100% by Star Limited. Okay, Star Limited is the owner. Whether Sun Limited is related to Moon Limited? Yes, they are related. Now, whether Sun Limited is related to Moon Limited, assuming Mr. John is a KMP of Star Limited instead of Moon Limited. So, I am a KMP of the parent, okay? If I'm the KMP of the parent, uh, you know, possibly we'll have to look at that, right? That's a good question. Let's look at it. Would, we, would you answer in A and B above change if Mr. John has joint control over Sun Limited and not the control? Possibly the answer may change. Would you answer in A and B above change if Mr. John has significant influence over Sun Limited? Of course, the answer will change. Let's look at the solution. Since Mr. John controls Sun Limited and is also a KMP of Moon Limited, they are related parties. Okay. So I control this guy and I'm a KMP here. So they are related parties. Star Limited is the owner of Moon Limited. Okay. That was scenario A. Okay. Let's go to scenario B. In the in the scenario B, what is scenario B? Scenario B is Sun Limited will still be related to Moon Limited. Why? Because Mr. John is a hundred percent investment in Sun and is a KMP in Star Limited, which is a parent of Moon Limited. Okay, it's a hundred percent, so it will still be related to Moon Limited. Okay. Remember the person, if I'm the KMP of the parent, then as a result of which the subsidiary also have become the related party. Okay. Now look at scenario three. The answer to A and B will not change under the scenario where Mr. John has a joint control over Sun Limited. Okay. So Mr. John has a joint control over Sun Limited and, and, uh, and he's a KMP in moon limited and star limited is the owner then the answer to a and b will not change under this scenario where mr john has a joint control so it continues as a related party now if mr john has significant influence over sun limited that's my scenario number four okay so if that is the case it's only a significant influence or not joint control we will not be related party to Moon Limited, even though Mr. John is a KMP of Moon Limited. Sun Limited is no longer a related party. So Sun Limited is not a related party in this scenario. Not a related party. So only exception in this example we saw is when I have significant influence. So when I had control, when I had joint control, and then I was a related party, when I, even though I was a KMP of the, of the Moon Limited, or I was a KMP uh, uh, in the Star Limited, right? In all scenario, Moon Limited and Sun Limited were related parties. Moon Limited is a related 
party of your Mr. John in this scenario also. But the Sun Limited and Moon Limited are not related to each other. Okay. Awesome. Let's quickly summarize what we've talked about. Relationship between the reporting entity and another entity, relationship in, of an entity with a person, right? Or another entity, when we look at a person who has control or joint control or, or significant influence, or again, a member of a key management personnel of, okay, uh, of the reporting entity or the parent of the reporting entity. And then we also defined, uh, you know, the relatives of the person, right? Uh, another entity, if they are member of the same group, uh, one entity is an associate or joint venture of the other entity or a member of the group of which the entity is a member. One entity is a joint venture of a third party and the other entity is an associate of that third entity. Both entities are joint venture of the same third party. It's a post-employment benefit plan or the entity itself such a plan or entity is controlled or jointly controlled by a related person or a related person has significant influence over the entity or is a member of the key management personnel of the entity, right? Last, yes, the entity or any member of a group of which it is a part provides key management personal service, key management personal service to the reporting entity or to the parent. All of this is what we discussed with the help of example here, of course, uh, there are some more bit in terms of the uh, the relationships, right? Uh, we talked about the uh, the children's spouses, uh, parents, right? All of them, uh, and your brother and sister. They are also all your related parties. What are not related parties? Two entities having common director or other KMP venture sharing joint control over a joint venture, provider of finance, trade unions, they are not related or consumer supplier, et cetera, with whom there is a you know, deep transaction relationships, right? They are not related parties. So we've understood the definition of related parties. Now that's that was the key, right? Once I've understood the related party, who all are parties to each other, then I'm going to focus on now on related party transactions. See, what are related party transactions I need to capture as part of my reporting? And essentially, whatever you are doing with that related party is, is what is required to be captured. So we will, we will quickly talk about that, uh, about all related party transactions. I'm just going to take a pause.